Hey there, I'm Rachel Ehring from Dream Lavender Music, and you're listening to the Dynamic Piano Teaching Podcast, the show that dives into piano pedagogy without being stuffy. If you're a piano teacher who wants to go beyond the method book to create an engaging, innovative studio, you've come to the right place. So let's get started. Hello, piano teacher friends. I'm coming to you today with a solo episode to share a bit of a year in review. I thought about calling this episode my favorite things, but it seemed a little bit cliche, I guess. So I decided to call it things that bring me joy. But it's going to include a lot of my favorite things from the past months since I started the podcast in late spring. Some of these are products that I've used in teaching, but some are ideas or more intangible things. They aren't in any particular order, but I've numbered them anyway to keep track. So here we go. Number 10. Something that I found really useful in teaching this year is the Rhythm Builder from Dynamic Doodle Co. Stephanie, who is the owner of Dynamic Doodle, was one of my very first guests when I launched the podcast back on episode two, and we talked about the Rhythm Builder as well as many of her other amazing products. If you aren't familiar with the Rhythm Builder, it is a wooden puzzle where you put quarter notes, half notes, etc. in to create rhythms. One of the great things about it is that the notes are proportional so that if you're creating a 4-4 measure, you have to put note values that equal 4 or the puzzle doesn't work out. Just as proof of how well it works, I wanted to share a little anecdote with you. I was teaching a group piano class over the summer, and I was teaching for four time on a whiteboard and trying to get them to write rhythms that equaled four. Some of them were kind of getting it, I guess, but there were several who were completely guessing. So I decided to scrap the whole whiteboard idea, and I said, let's do this puzzle instead. And I pulled out the rhythm builder. The change was almost instantaneous once they had the visual in front of them, and it was then that I decided I should never try to teach 4-4 without the Rhythm Builder again. Number nine is not a product, but rather a practice that I've been working on over the past few years, actually, and that is meditation. I talked about this a little bit in episode six called When Life Feels Too Busy. Meditation can be a lot of different things, but I like to do a guided meditation from YouTube. You can check out episode six for my favorite channel. For me, meditation has been a way to relax, calm my anxious thoughts, and center my mind. And honestly, it helps me sleep better as well, which is a nice side benefit. Unfortunately, I don't get to it every day, but when I do, I feel a difference in my mindset and in my body. If you've never tried it, I encourage you to start small and see if you notice any changes in your mood or mindset. All right, again, not in any particular order, but number eight is the coaching that I did with Amy Elmore earlier this year. You can hear more about it in episode 24, where I interviewed Amy. Amy told us in that episode that she is fairly new to coaching piano teachers, but I'm going to tell you that she is really good at it. She didn't just show up to our coachings and say, okay, what do you want to talk about? She prepared ahead of time and then she had resources. She had recordings that she shared with me on Google Drive. And it was so beneficial to me and to my job at the conservatory where I work. If you are feeling stuck in your business or maybe like you've hit a plateau and you're having a hard time moving forward, I would encourage you to reach out to a coach, whether Amy or someone else, and see what it can do for you and your business. And while I'm talking about Amy, I'll add a little bonus one here. This, I guess, is maybe 8.5. I have loved attending Amy's monthly virtual happy hours and seeing many of your faces there. There's so much wisdom and so many ideas that are shared in that group, and it's been really helpful for me. Number seven is Piano Detectives Club. I actually did two episodes about this one. Episode 15 was an interview with the creator of Piano Detectives Club, Janet Hart. And then I followed it up with a bonus behind the scenes episode of my experiences using Piano Detectives Club. I was looking for a curriculum for my group piano classes that would help me be more structured rather than pulling ideas from all over the place and feeling like the classes were honestly a bit chaotic. 
Piano Detectives Club has been great for my situation, and I have really enjoyed learning the curriculum and not having the pressure of making up my own plans every week. If you didn't catch those episodes and you're interested in learning more, go back and take a listen. Number six is maybe a little bit different. Something that has brought me joy this year has been walking my dog, Frida. I'm sure I've talked about Frida before, but I couldn't tell you on which episode. There are a lot of reasons why I have enjoyed our walks, including getting out in the fresh air, getting some exercise. But one of the main reasons is that I almost always catch up on my favorite podcasts during our walks. If you look at the podcast library on my phone, you would see all sorts of podcasts. So I'll just mention a couple of my favorites. For music-related podcasts, I have been a longtime listener to Andrea Miller's Music Studio Startup podcast and Tim Topham's Integrated Music Teaching podcast. In fact, I think those were two of the earliest podcasts that I ever listened to, and I still love them to this day. I also like to listen to business podcasts like Amy Porterfield's Online Marketing Made Easy and one you might not be familiar with called Pursuing Her Purpose, which is geared toward moms who are also entrepreneurs. And then I have a couple of just for fun podcasts when I'm in the mood for something light. One of those is called Best Friend Energy, and it's with the two women, Clea and Joanna, from the Netflix show, The Home Edit. So if you're a fan of the show, you'll love the podcast. As the title says, it's just two best friends talking about everything from celebrity gossip to organizing pantries and a whole lot of other things. Number five, if you've listened to some of my solo podcast episodes, you know that I love using stories with my students and seeing them be so engaged in books and stories brings me a lot of joy. I've mentioned a few times on the podcast that I've started creating little improvisation stories for my beginners. I actually started writing these stories several years ago, but it took me a long time to figure out how to make them into cute little printables that other teachers could use rather than just a paragraph in a Word document somewhere. So having a resource that I've created myself and using it with my students is definitely one of my favorite things from recent months. And then whenever one of you sends me a message telling me that you used one of my stories with your students and that they enjoyed it, I get so excited. So if you're curious to learn more about these, you can check out the link in the show notes to get your free sound effects story. And then if you're interested in my other ones, those are all in my Etsy store. All right, number four. This one might be my most favorite podcast moment so far. If you listened to episode 11, I interviewed Christina Whitlock, and we talked all about supplemental repertoire. She shared tons of her favorites, so go back and listen if you're wanting to expand your music library. But my favorite moment was near the end when I asked her what kind of impact supplemental repertoire has made on her students. I was not prepared for her answer. She told me about a former student who she saw out somewhere, and the student showed her a tattoo of the song title of one of the pieces that Christina had taught her. I wish you could have seen my face at that moment when she told me. It was not at all what I was expecting when I asked that question, and it makes me laugh to this day when I think about it. So thank you, Christina, for bringing me a moment of joy that has continued on every time I think about it. Number three is Tim Topham's new book, No Book Beginners. I loved reading this book to prepare for my interview with Tim Topham. By the way, having Tim on my show was definitely one of my favorite things and a dream come true, and I was so honored that he agreed to do the interview with me. Both the book and the interview gave me renewed inspiration for trying to be more creative in my piano teaching. You know, even though I have this show where we talk about creative resources every week, sometimes I get lazy in my teaching and feel like maybe I don't have enough brain cells that day to do improvisation exercises or have the student play by ear. There were so many ideas in Tim's book of ways to expand lessons beyond the method books, and I appreciated that he talked in our interview about how to carry those ideas forward beyond those first few lessons. If you haven't picked up the book yet, I'll put the link in the show notes again so you can grab your copy, and I encourage you to do so. All right, number two. 
One of the highlights of my year professionally was attending the National Conference for Keyboard Pedagogy in Chicago back in July. I've mentioned it many times on the show because I met so many of you there and made incredible connections both personally and professionally. Honestly, I only attended a small fraction of the sessions that were available to teachers, but I still learned so much and was inspired to become a better piano teacher through the sessions and also through meeting and talking with other teachers there. If you've never gone, I encourage you to consider going in 2025 when they have the next in-person conference. It was so, so worth it. All right. I can't believe we're at number one already. But for number one, rather than sharing a product or a person, I want to share two pieces of advice that I've heard recently that I'm trying to live by. The first one, I'm not sure where or when I heard it for the first time, but it's great advice that I think of often. It is this, do something that your future self will appreciate. These words often pop into my head when I'm procrastinating a task that I just don't want to do right now. Maybe it's doing the dishes, prepping lunches the night before, or sending an email that I'm dreading. There's something about picturing my future self with the task completed and behind me that is very motivating to get it done now and stop procrastinating. Let me know if this resonates with you as well. I'm curious if other people use this as a motivational tool the way I do. The other words of wisdom that I recently heard were on the Mel Robbins podcast, Mel Robbins was sharing about a time that she was feeling anxious and worried about something that she had no control over, and she said to herself, what if it all works out? I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes. It was really thought-provoking the way she explained it and how it changes our thought process and calms us down if we think those six words instead of imagining the worst-case scenario. What if it all works out? Try it next time you're anxious about something beyond your control and see what it does for your mind and your body. Well, friends, that's the end of my list. Thank you for indulging me while I reminisce over the past months and some of the things that have brought me joy. I have to say that I could have listed every single episode and every guest that I've had on the podcast because every one of them has blown me away in some capacity. I feel so privileged to get to talk to piano teachers each week who are doing truly incredible things, and I hope that you have been as inspired as I have been by each and every one of them. Thank you to all of you who have been on my show, and especially to those of you who listen in every week. I would love to hear from you. Drop me a DM on Instagram at Rachel Aaring, and tell me what has been bringing you joy recently. Until then... Happy piano teaching.